and I never could find the original post. But what she wanted was to see how in this page here, which actually this page is built inside of ClickFunnels, she wanted to know how was it that they were able to put these two icons in here like this. Because if you start inspecting this thing, you're going to find out real quick that they have... Let me think here. Well, let's pull up the inspector again. It's been a couple of days since I looked at this, so let me just make sure I'm saying this right. Because I forget if this was two columns or one column. Okay, so it is a two-column row because we've got our two columns here. So in the left column, we just have this big image. And in the right column, then, we have a whole bunch of stuff. So let me just open a bunch of this up. So we got a headline at the top. Then we got a separator. We got another headline right here. And then all of a sudden, it stops. And I tell you, the first time I looked at this, I just scratched my head and I'm like, what, what are they, how are they doing that? And God love them because they didn't know what they were doing as far as being able to use CSS or jQuery or anything else like that. So what they did is they came in here and they did a margin of minus 350 pixels. So if we come down to the bottom, we can take out that that margin and what it's going to do is it took what was here and it dropped it down to here okay because what they did is they built this down here and then they pushed it up and then over into this column well then there's also another place in here where is it there's another place in here where they got a big negative top margin as well where was that okay I'm pretty sure it was this entire section here let me see where was it? Okay, right here. So here they had top margin of minus 335 pixels. So that's how this originally was built. So they put in a couple of headline elements here and a, and a divider. Then they built another section down here. So they built another row, I should say, down there. Let me uh, see if I can find it. Okay, that's the bottom row. And then... Yeah, they had a three-column row right here is how they created those two icons. And then they had that right there. So they basically created this, moved it up 350 pixels into this space, and then also then pulled this up below it. Okay? Now I'm going to show you a much simpler way to be able to do that right now. And so here we have my demo. And let me come in first and let me just kill all the CSS. And so we'll turn everything off. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong one there. Huh? All right, let's come down here to the bottom. Pay no attention to that code at the top for right now. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so what I did here is I created a two-column row, and I just dropped in a bunch of uh, headline elements to represent basically that whole list of things they had over here. And then I came down here, made a second row, and inside of that row I put in a bunch of icon elements. So let's just uh, put in another one right now, show you how to do that. So we'll scroll down to the bottom, put in an icon, And it always comes in as this chart thing. And we'll open this up. First thing I want to do is get rid of any top margin at all. We'll go to advanced. And whether you align it center, left, right, it doesn't matter. Just leave it at center. And so we're going to click on this and we're going to type in... Okay, come on. Let's just put in something like a sword or something. Let's see what it finds to keep with the theme of what I got going on. All right, let's put this thing in, whatever it is. Okay, so there we go. Now we have six elements. You can have as many elements here as you want within reason. Eventually, you're going to run out of room. But you can have two, three, four, five, six. I tried it with six last night. It still fit. I have a feeling if I got to seven or eight, it would probably be way too much. And now what we want to do is obviously right here where it says insert images after this headline. That's what I want to do is I want to take each of these icons, I want to insert it under this headline and make them all in a line. 
and you can actually do this with essentially one line of CSS code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at this element because we need to identify this element to say where are we going to insert this. So just like we did before with what we did for Chris, we're going to want to insert some content after this headline. So I just called it after headline. And so we're going to insert the content after that. So let's come up to our tracking code. And again, it's absolutely one line of code. So we got uh, data title, icon row. So down here where I created that row, I called it icon row, and I'll show you that in a second. And I just say insert after data title after headline. That's it. Now I only have one of them called after headline, so I just use an equal here. If I had, if I had in a data title, if I wanted to affect like a whole bunch of them, let's say I had image one, image two, image three, image four, image five, I would say data title asterisk equals image. And the asterisk equals means contains. So the data title contains the string or the word image. And so you would do it that way if you wanted to affect a whole bunch of them simultaneously. But at this point here, we're just saying take this row again, just like we did on the last one, take this row and insert it after that other element up here. So again here, hashtag, and you're going to see it's called icon row right there. So now the CSS and where the magic comes in, now you're going to say, well, why isn't this up there right now? Well, it's not going to be up there until after the JavaScript fires. So, and again, the JavaScript only fires after the page is done loading. Whereas we can change the CSS right in here. And as I change the CSS, you'll see it on the page. But until we run the page and the JavaScript actually runs after the page loads, then it'll move it up here. Okay, so in this case here, let's see, right here. So it's called here data title of icon row. So you see that right there. So we got data title, icon row. And now how flex works is you have to call the flex or flex box from the element directly outside of the elements you want to flex or line up. So you have all of our icons right here. So and inside of each one, as I've discussed before, everything has multiple elements inside of it. So normally you have a wrap around the outside and then you will have something on the inside of it. Okay. So a headline wrapper will have a wrapper on the outside. It'll have the text on the inside. A button will have a wrapper on the outside. It'll have the anchor text on the inside. So in this case here, these are also anchor text because the icon, you can just put a, a URL in there and then send somebody off somewhere else when they click on it. But so in this case here, we have all of our icons all lined up right here. And so the first element outside of what you want to line up is what you want to target and tell it to display flex. So in this case here, it's the call inner class is what we're going to use. So in order to call this, we have to say data, uh, where's a data title, icon row, space, period, call inner. So we're saying use this data title, go down the levels, however many levels you have to go down to then find that class of call inner and then do whatever we're going to tell it in the CSS, do that to this element right here. So that's what we did right in here. We're going to say now do our data title, icon row, call inner, and all we're going to say now is to display flex. That's the first thing we have to do. And then everything after that is basically, once you say display flex, the rest of it is, okay, how do you want it lining up? And there's, there's got to be a couple of dozen different ways that you can do that. But the biggest part is just knowing how to target it by just going the one level outside of what you want to line up and say display flex. And once you say that, it will put them all side by each and it'll jam them over to the left-hand side because floating to the left or what they refer to as justify content flex start will push them all the way over to the left. Now, what we can do then is we want it in the middle so we can align the item center 
And then we can tell it, actually, I may not even need the align. Let me see here. Okay. I don't even think I need the align item center. I think the space evenly takes care of that, as I found out on a different thing I was working on here. So I don't even need this. So it's basically two lines of CSS code. So in order to do this, is two lines of CSS code and one line of JavaScript code to be able to do this entire thing. So we're going to justify content space evenly, and then we are going to turn our tracking code back on because I think I turned that off. So let's go back in here and take off those two remark remarks there, or the thing that turns it into a remark, and we'll click on Save. And in this case here, I'm going to preview it because I think what happened before is when I tried to reload the page, it didn't pick it up. And normally previewing it will pick up your changes faster than the other. So there we go. Now we got six of them all lined up here. But let's say we don't want to have all six of these. So we can come in here. Let's just say we're going to delete this one out. And we'll delete this one out too. So we only want four. So we delete them out, we save them. Now you see here, it still spaced them all evenly. And so as we come back in then to this tab here and we reload that, what we're gonna find is they will still be four of them in that row, all spaced evenly. Now you saw when the page loaded again, they were all four down here at the bottom. So what I would probably do in a case like that is I would probably hide them at first. So do a display none using the CSS, hide them at first, and then after they load up here, then I would show them by adding just a little bit to the end of our tracking code, which would be, um, so we would go here, period, show, Semicolon, there should have been a semicolon at the end there, but because it's the last statement within this script, it doesn't need to be there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in and actually let us, yeah, let's hide the entire row because that's what I'm targeting in the JavaScript. Okay, let me go back in here and check this again just to make sure, because that should work, because I should be saying icon row, insert after, and then show. Okay, that should work just fine. And we will save it. We will reload. And now we should not see it here at first on the page. It should just pop up, boom, right there. Once the page gets done loading, it just pops right in there.